So this study that is that was published in December 2017 or in 2018 from University of Glasgow, UK, it shows that 15 kilogram body weight loss if somebody is overweight or obese reverses their type 2 diabetes mellitus. So let's look at this study and I would also propose that while we look at this study, please keep in mind that intermittent fasting can trigger autophagy and cause reversal of the diabetes, providing a break to the pancreatic cells by reducing stress on them, for example, by not eating a lot of carbohydrates or not eating ultra processed foods, or seeing what are the other stressful factors would also reverse diabetes by redifferentiating the beta cells that had become dedifferentiated. It's a different study I'm, I'm referring to. The, the point I'm making is that before we see the study for the weight loss, please realize that there are multiple ways of reversing type 2 diabetes mellitus. It should not be taken as a chronic progressive disease. In this particular study, they had chosen those individuals who had a BMI of 27 and above, I think up to 45, and they had developed diabetes within last six years. They were not on insulin. However, they were on anti-diabetes medications. And then they restricted their calories for one year. And those who developed, who reduced weight by 15 kilogram, 86% of them had diabetes reversed, type 2 diabetes mellitus reversed. So let's look at it quickly. So this is the study. I'm, I'm going to go to a bigger font soon. This is the primary care-led weight management for remission of type 2 diabetes and open-label cluster randomized trial. And for your reading pleasure, there is a twin cycle hypothesis that is the basis of this study. The twin cycle hypothesis says that the, the way the diabetes occurs is that as we eat more than we should or we have foods that cause irritation to our systems, the liver becomes the first target. Liver becomes insulin resistant. When it becomes insulin resistant, it would not pick up glucose anymore or it would pick up less glucose. That would cause the glucose to become more abundant in the body. That would cause pancreas to release even more insulin, sensing that there is a lot of glucose. Liver would try to pick up whatever it can and it would convert that into glycogen, which is glucose stores. Then it would convert that to fats. Then the liver would become fatty. <clears throat> the more the liver would become fatty, the more insulin resistant it will become. Now the fats that liver is making, it would release them out in the environment as well, the remaining body. Those fats will go to the pancreas and the pancreatic beta cells or islet cells of the pancreas would also start becoming fatty and they would stop working or reduce working. So the point is, with the diabetes in this, in this hypothesis, it is the liver and the pancreas that become fatty and stop functioning correctly. So reducing fat from them actually bring back the normal functioning tissue and that is how the diabetes becomes reversed. So let's look at it together. So this is the original study and then this is the follow-up after five years and they saw that people who had continued to maintain their weight 10 kilogram lesser, they continue to stay in remission. So now let's look at the study here with a little bigger font. So here, if you see the summary, the type 2 diabetes is a chronic disorder that requires lifelong treatment. And I would uh, provide an editorial over here that in our mainstream management of diabetes, this is correct, that it is a chronic progressive disease requiring lifelong interventions. However, if you catch it early on and if you can reverse it, then you can, with some lifestyle balances, you can actually live a normal life. And that should be the target for all of us. It is not right in this day and age to have recently developed diabetes and not attempt to reverse that. So they say we aim to assess whether intensive weight management 
within routine primary care would achieve remission of type 2 diabetes. So what they did was they created a weight management program. They provided best practice guidelines. They had an intervention group that was on that program. There was a normal best practices for diabetes management that became the control group. And what they did was they had people who were 20 to 65 years of age. They were type 2 diabetic. They were within six years diagnosed. Their BMI was from 27 to 45 kilogram per meter square and they were not on insulin. Now I do have a good news for insulin dependent type 2 diabetes, diabetics as well. They also have studies that show reversal in them as well. Although that reversal is slow and maybe fragile but that happens in them too. So back here. <clears throat> The intervention comprised withdrawal of anti-diabetics. So these patients didn't get any more anti-diabetics and anti-hypertensive. So no more anti-hypertensives. Total diet replacement. So they replaced their diet. They actually offered them the diet from their program, which was 825 to 853 kilocalorie per day formula diet for three to five months. Now, some folks, I saw the comments about this study. They said this is a very low dietary very low calorie diet this is not very low calorie i believe very low calorie diet is defined as calories lesser than 700 this is 825 and 853 so this is called low calorie not very low calorie anyways uh, <clears throat> then what they did was after three to five months they had a stepped food reintroduction for two to eight weeks and then they provide a structure program to how to keep the weight down the co-primary outcomes, what were they measuring, were weight loss of 15 kilogram or more and remission of diabetes defined as the glycated hemoglobin, uh, hemoglobin A was in C less than 6.5%, which is, you know, pre-diabetic is considered up to 6.5% after at least two months of all anti-diabetic medications. So today you stop all the diabetes medication then two months later, you have hemoglobin A1C of 6.5 or lesser. And they were measuring these from the baseline, the day the people started, up to 12 months. What did they find? This is really interesting and I'll, I'll give you the headline again. The headline is, those who reduced 15 kilogram, they, 86% of them achieved reversal of diabetes or remission of type 2 diabetes mellitus that is a huge deal and we should all if anybody one if we are afraid of becoming sick with diabetes then we should try to keep our weight under control if we are diabetic then weight reduction so according to this study there are other studies dr jason fung study that show intermittent fasting works there are still other studies that show that uh, redifferentiating of the beta cells that works as well so that means there are multiple ways to reduce uh, to reverse diabetes this is one way you're seeing so here they had 306 individuals from 49 intervention 23 were in the intervention and control were 26 149 participants per group so there were 149 participants in both group that they wanted to treat and then some are lost to, um, some stop the intervention, some are lost to the follow-up. So they ended up with 23 and 26. At 12 months, we recorded weight loss of 15 kilogram or more in 36 or 24 percent of the participants in the intervention group and no participants in the control group. Diabetes remission was achieved in 68 46%. This is the overall 46%. In this group, they have included those who lost very less weight to 15 kilogram. So you would see the difference between weight loss groups. So don't go with this 46% uh, yet, but check this out. <clears throat> so 46% in the intervention group and only 4% in the uh, control group. So they the folks who were in this intervention group were 19 or 20 times more likely to have their diabetes reversed. 
So this is the important uh, statement now. Remission varied with weight loss in the whole study population with achievement in none of 76 participants who gained weight. So there were 76 who actually gained weight and so they had no remission, no reversal of diabetes. Then 6 of 89, that is 7%, who maintained 0 to 5 kilogram weight loss. So 6% still had remission. 34%, 19 people out of 56, who had 5 to 10 kilogram weight loss, had the, the diabetes reversed. 36%, just for 5 to 10 kilogram weight loss. And as you're seeing that as the weight loss increases, more and more people have their diabetes reversed. 16 of 28, that is 57 percent, who had 10 to 15, 10 to 15 kilogram, and 31 or 86 percent of 36, who had who lost 15 kilogram or more. 86 percent of type 2 diabetics diagnosed within the last six years, having a BMI of 27 and above, being on anti-diabetic and anti-hypertensive drugs. The classic case for doctors to say, you are a chronic progressive uh, you know, disease patient and now we have to figure out how to protect your kidneys and your ne ne neuronal tissue and immune system and, and uh, foot, etc. 86%. Then this is also an interesting one over here, quality of life. So imagine somebody who's over, overweight or obese, their quality of life versus somebody who may not be. So here, or the same person when they lose the weight, how would they feel? So quality of life as measured by the Eurocall five dimensions with visual analog scale improved by 7.2 points in the intervention group and decreased by 2.9 points in the control group. Those on standard of care actually had deteriorated quality of life in one year. And those who started just weight loss, no, no drugs, no, no anti-diabetics, no anti-hypertensives. Uh, and here they are. Then they had nine serious adverse events, 4% in the intervention group and two were reported in um, in the control group. The two serious events out of those seven that were in the intervention group, biliary colic and abdominal pain, that was in the same 1% and that was deemed to be because of this uh, dietary change. The rest did not seem to be uh, related to this. No serious adverse events led to withdrawal from the study. So that is a discussion. If somebody is diabetic, overweight, just losing 15 kilogram, bring them to a reversal of their type 2 diabetes mellitus. And I also want to very quickly, this is the last point and then we stop. I also want to very quickly explain how hypertension occurs in diabetes. So one reason for hypertension in diabetes is that the uh, glycation of the blood vascular system causes vasoconstriction. Then inflammation in the system causes the stress hormones, which would also then cause vasoconstriction. However, insulin, because in, in diabetics, hyperinsulinemia can occur in the early phases of diabetes. Then when the pancreas becomes uh, compromised, then insulin level, levels go down and the person then becomes insulin dependent at some point. Insulin can cause hypertension. This is why somebody who is gaining weight has hypertension, is middle-aged, does not have diabetes yet, yet, it may be necessary to look at their hyperinsulinemia because it may be the beginning of the diabetes where in the beginning there is more insulin produced. The insulin works on the kidney to cause sodium and water retention. Water is passive sodium retention. Insulin works on the blood vessels to cause vasoconstriction. Insulin reduces nitric oxide production to cause vasoconstriction. Insulin causes suprarenal glands to produce epinephrine, which then cause vasoconstriction. Insulin causes renin angiotensin system to be activated, which then causes aldosterone system from the suprarenal gland to be activated, which then causes water retention. 
So vasoconstriction combined with water retention, more fluid, more fluid volume, vasoconstriction, less diameter of the blood vessels, that is hypertension, which would then result in the cardiac problems as well. And just reducing 15 kilogram. And it is cheap. No drugs. Less food. It is cheap. And if you don't want to do such caloric restriction, then intermittent fasting. The point is redu redu uh, weight reduction, carbohydrate cutting, these things would help a lot. So this is the discussion. If somebody is overweight, they have diabetes, please share this with them. If not the video, then just tell them that just, hey, 15 kilograms of weight loss. 86% of the participants had a reversal. It is bad nowadays to live with type 2 diabetes when it can be reversed. It is important for your physician to tell you that type 2 diabetes can be reversed and we should do everything to reverse it, not to manage it. So that is the discussion. Thank you very much. Please like, subscribe and share. There are links in the description if you would like to support this work. And join me on my Patreon where on weekly basis we do two Zoom calls live where we talk about these things in full detail we go on for two hours at a time and then for more medical lectures go to drbean.com and become a member there as well these members also get the chance to come in in the patron meetings as well and watch those videos too with this thank you very much talk to you later